Hello everyone and welcome to Rui Raptor YouTube channel. I'm Sandra and this is our first video of 2019. And we will start the new year with some fresh news. Today we decided to show you a new 3D printer brand, the Artillery. This brand appeared last October and they released this 3D printer just recently, in December 2018. The printer is the Sidewinder X1 and we are very curious to test it. I will do the unboxing and the assembly while Hui will show you all the details. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video. Ok, let's do this. Hi guys! As you can tell, the box is big and inside we can find a warning sheet and the user manuals. A very cool bag with some goodies inside. The parts for the spool holder and the power cord. The spool holder comes in a couple of pieces and on one of them we can find the filament sensor. This is the sensor that will make it possible to get warnings when the filament runs out. Inside this cool bag we can find many things such as some tape and an extra flat cable Six spare wheels which is very handy, the USB cable and a USB flash drive, a small bag with screws and a bag with some tools and we can also find a spare RGB LED. One cool detail that I must mention is that they placed zip ties to secure the access for transportation. And here's the top half. As you can see, we have a dual Z with dual step motors and both are linked with a belt at the top to maintain both axes synchronized. The cable that goes to the top is protected and hidden with some plastic slot covers all the way down. The hot end is protected and also for safety purposes by this printed cover. To remove it, simply unscrew the couple of screws on the side. Here we can see a direct setup with a small pancake stepper motor and a Titan type extruder. Underneath is the RGB LED. The extruder tension knob is a bit hard to reach and turn because it's faced back here. The hot end is a volcano with a bore heat brick. Next is the bottom half of the printer. Here we have an AC controlled heat bed with a glass surface. Underneath we have 6 wheels on the carriage and a large 60x20 profile for it to slide on. All the end stop sensors are electronic proximity sensors which I prefer over the mechanical ones. We can use a micro SD card or a flash drive to open the files. The display is a 2.8 inch color touch screen. The metal profiles are all nicely cut. They didn't just cut them straight, the edges are actually treated with a chamfer. For cooling, 
there is a 40 by 40 fan on the left side of the base pulling air out and a big air vent on the right side, which is the side where the board is located. To access all the electronics, we need to remove the screws at the bottom side and remove the panel. Inside, we can find a Gen L board and five drivers. The Dual Z is controlled by two drivers. These drivers don't have any brand label or markings that we can recognize, so we cannot know for sure which driver are these. They don't seem to be Allegro or TMC. There's a distribution board, and we can see the filament sensor connected to the display board. control the AC heat bed, we have a solid state relay and for the electronics we have a 24 volt 8 amp power supply. Now the assembly is super easy. Just place the top half on top of the base and screw it tight with the four long screws. At the top, we install the spool holder. We need to use a spool to check the distance between both parts. The belt is in front of the screws, but with the round tip Allen key, we can easily secure it. Next, we can connect the filament sensor. Cut the zip ties to free the axis. Next, we need to connect a few cables. The left and right Z motors, the filament sensor connector and the flat cable. For some FPC connectors you need to check the locks so pull both locks out, insert the flat cable and press the locks in. The Z sensor is installed at the right vertical beam. Lower the Z so that the nozzle almost touches the bed and secure the sensor while pushing it against the horizontal profile. Don't follow the manual for the Z sensor installation. If you install the sensor on the left of the beam, the X carriage will hit the sensor and you will not get the full travel. So you need to install the sensor on the right side of the beam instead to get the full travel. Last but not least, connect the power cord. And the assembly is now complete. As you can see, you will have it ready for the first power on in just a few minutes. Before the first power on, and as always, we like to do a few quick checks. We noticed the X belt a bit loose, and the problem was not the idler, as it was already as its max position. The problem was the zip tie that secures the belt. We stretched the belt and installed a couple of new zip ties. The Y-axis belt was ok, but if you need to adjust, simply loosen these two screws, pull the idler plate and tighten the screws. Next, we must check all the wheels on all carriages. 
If you find any loosened wheel, look for the eccentric nut and turn it to adjust the grip. Don't forget to check the wheels under the Y-axis carriage. You will find the eccentric nuts on one of the sides. Now we can turn the printer on and run the home sequence. Next, we need to level the bed. So, heat up the bed up to 50 degrees C and then look for the leveling option on the display. We can move the nozzle automatically to each corner and adjust the bed using a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper. Although this printer comes with the plastic knobs, they are still a bit small and hard to reach. But in other hand, the leveling was actually very quick to do because the glass is perfectly flat. Also with the display, we can test the RGB LED. We can turn the light on and off and toggle the color. The printer is now ready to print. You can print on a glass bed, but as always, we prefer to use masking tape instead. To load the filament, you must first feed it through the filament sensor and then to the extruder. We then use the option to automatically load the filament into the hot end. We can use an SD card or USB memory stick, but we first need to select which one to use in the menus. Inside the USB stick, we have the already sliced model, so let's start with that. The sliced model is a small cube with the company logo on the top. During the first prints, we notice a big temperature variation and that affects the print quality. To fix that, we ran a PID calibration. After the calibration, the temperature became stable from that moment on. The printer runs very silent like it was using TMC drivers. The cooling fans are also not very loud. As usual, we like to try and print a big model in vase mode. So, we have chosen a rocket model. The print area of this printer is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. The layer cooling fan is a powerful one. The fan duct design could be a little bit better, but it does its job. We also tested the print resume feature, but unfortunately it didn't work. After turning the print off and back on, we see no information of a lost job on the display. In the menus, we can find a resume button. From there, the printer asks for the file used, but when we select the file, we get a resume error on top of the screen. The filament run out feature works perfectly. When the filament runs out during a print, the display changes and the print stops. We can also hear a loud beep that can only be stopped when we push the continue or stop button. The print will then resume when we insert new filament and press continue. 
the wire management is perfect, but for the hot end and X motor and X end stop wires, they decided to use this large FPC flat cable. I actually have some concerns about the nozzle heater and stepper motor wires because these flat cables are not designed to handle the current that the nozzle heater and the stepper motor requires. Even so, and after several prints, the connections are still working and I don't get a hot flat cable. We also tested printing with TPE and it was very easy to print with it. I used the same print speed as for PLA to print this cube. Although the extruder can handle this TPE32, it cannot handle super flex filaments like Filaflex. The print quality for the vase models look ok, but we can see a bit of ghosting on the surface. Since I don't know which drivers are installed, I installed my own TMC drivers, adjusted the VREFs and printed this rocket again. With the TMCs, I see less ghosting and smoother surface. The other prints that are not made in vase mode are not bad if we look at them facing directly to the surface. But if we see them in an angle, we notice some uneven layering. I tested different filaments to make sure I didn't have any bad spool, but results are the same. This very small uneven layering does not seem to be caused by Z-Wobble. I'm currently working on some modification and fixes and I will update in our Facebook page, so stay tuned for the developments. Check the video description for the link on where you can find this printer. And that's it you guys, hope you liked this video and as always don't forget to hit like and keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. If you like our work and wish to help, you can with Patreon and Paypal. We will see you guys next time, bye!